And apparently we have to sign NDAs and gatekeep Jesus to get into church. Where they do that at? Hey, 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 Conscious Crew. We are back on the Conscious Creative Corner podcast. I am your host, Sia, the Transparent Therapist. And today we are unpacking trauma to heal relationships. Yes, you know, 7M is the documentary out on Netflix. And apparently we have to sign NDAs and gatekeep Jesus to get into church. Where they do that at? I am going to talk to you guys today from a therapist and clinical perspective on what happened or what I perceived has happened in this film. And I want to just start off by saying, if you have found yourself in this situation before and you're watching this video and you're not sure how to get out, please seek help. Tell somebody, find security within yourself. I know it's more, it's simpler said than done, but in order for people to escape things like this, it's important for us to understand that we're in this kind of situation. Make sure y'all stick through to the end because I actually almost got caught up in a cult and this just reminded me that these things happen to everyday people. So if you haven't seen the documentary, 7M is is about this church called Shekinah. And um, prior to them becoming a management company for creators, like dancers, um, they were a church that they're an, they're an occultist. They're occultists, right? Um, they've been in churches or they have this church where they gather members and they have to be a part of the church to be a part of the group. In this modern day time now, Shekinah is a church, but they also hold this management company called S7M where they take creators in, they manage them, and honestly, they're stripping them of their money. Now, the documentary outlines this one specific family where Miranda and her family, um, well, Miranda's family is trying to get her out of the cult. Miranda joins this cult, gets married, and strips all ties from her family. Her family is like, hey, we don't know what's going on. Why is she not contacting us? It comes to the point where before they even realize she's really in a cult, they're telling they're telling police officers like, hey, can you go check in on her? Because she moves to LA to advance her career and um, to do a wellness check because they're like, hey, Miranda doesn't sound like herself. They go do a wellness check and they come back and they say, well, ma'am, your daughter's fine. There's nothing wrong with her. She just doesn't want to come. The reason why they were so concerned is because it was Miranda's grandfather's funeral and Miranda loved, they had such a great, I think she called them pup, pup or pup, pup, something like that, right? Where they have this great relationship and Miranda decides like she's not going because a mentor or someone higher up or closer to God is what they referenced, that she referenced to her parents, told her that she cannot attend. Here's the thing. When people join cults, right, it's usually because of a lack of security. And this is coming from the clinical side, right? Usually there's a lack of security within themselves. In this documentary, we see that Miranda came from like a a great family. Like from the outside, it looks like a great family. Um, She has her sister who they mistaken as twins all the time. They have this brand where they start dancing. They've been dancing since they were children. Like we look a bit, right? maybe five, I want to say, have a whole studio in their house, dancing, dancing, dancing. They knew this was their passion. Now, Miranda's sister almost got caught up in this cult at one time, but realized like, hold on, this is not right, right? Um, Because she eventually gets invited to dinner, um, sits down with the pastor of the church. Uh, And the thing is, like I said earlier, you can't join this management 7M without being a part of the church. Now, Miranda gets caught up cuts ties with her family because the pastor, which is Robert, tells them that um, in order for them to go to heaven, they have to die to yourself, which means they have to cut ties with their family, their loved ones. And he then says this false doctrine that says, um, if you cut ties with them, it's going to make it easier for their family to get into heaven. Well, guys, if you're Christian, if you read your Bible, that Bible don't say that. It's given... You making stuff up, sir. So it's time for people. At this time, the people are just like going along with it, right? But I'm saying it's time for people present day to honestly know the word for yourself. Read the Bible. Read the Bible as if it was a book, just so you can educate yourself when people spit false doctrines because he's taking things out of context, right? And so Miranda is now dying to herself, denying her family. Crazy. 
And so her family's concerned, right? And like I said prior, on the outside, they seem to be a, a well-knit family, right? When I know people and patients come into my office, I do do a full assessment and I look at the family and I'm like, okay, what has happened? And this might be an unpopular opinion, but I do feel like something happened to Miranda for her to be susceptible to this. I'm not saying someone touched her. I'm not saying, you know, some something horrible happened in her family, but I think something happened, right, to bring her to this level of insecurity. Because when we're at a level of insecurity, we attach to things, people, things that we don't have business being in. And that attachment is supposed to give us a source of security because according to Maslow's law, top priority is having love and security. For her, she felt something insecure. I know her dancing career, and I'm telling you, this girl can dance, okay? Her dancing career was super important for her, but it was that she probably wasn't making enough money. And we do know that in this world, when we feel like we're not making enough money, it causes a sense of insecurity. So I'm not surprised that she did kind of cling on to Robert in the 7M group. So in this documentary, we were also finding out that she gets married, right? She marries someone in this cult, alleged cult, right? And um, what makes it a cult is Robert and their mentors, right? There's a hierarchy. So Robert's at the top and then they ha- he has like other group leaders and things of that nature. Robert and his mentors instructs all of the members of 7M and people from the past, right? And Shekinah on what to do, how to act, where to live, right? We know it becomes cult-ish because he starts, they all live in the same house. They have to live in the same um, quarters together. If we look at other cults in the past, a lot of these things, a lot of the cults have people doing things together, staying close knit, um, cutting off other people. And I mean, we can speculate that, okay, maybe they just have a really strong connection. That's true. I'm not going to deny that, right? But to the point where you're telling people to cut off your family, That's when it gets a little iffy. So there are other members in the documentary who have escaped, right, 7M and said, and I think there's this one gentleman who, oh my gosh, he was told by Robert, like, hey, in order for you to get to to heaven, you have to die of yourself and deny your son. I think he had like a two or three-year-old son. He was just like, I'm not doing that. (laughs) I get it. We're all stressed. And sometimes we wonder if we have to even get up in the morning. Sometimes you wonder if that job is really worth it. The thing is, I understand these struggles because I hear these struggles with my clients every day. And I thought it would be a good idea to help build a community where we can feel less stressed. So I created the Less Stress Community. If you want to join this community, you just text the word stress to 860-401-0207. In the community, you're going to receive three texts a week. Yes, three texts a week that is going to help elevate your understanding on trauma and how stress affects the body. I'm gonna provide you personally prompts that are gonna help you reflect. They're gonna push you into a space of healing, whether you know that you've gone through trauma or not. You know, I did this because a lot of my clients struggle and of course you only see me once a week or maybe twice a month, but I knew it would be very helpful for someone to be able to just use the text that they get to push them through some hard times. The best thing is it's only $17 a month and you can quit at any time, but trust me, you're not going to want to because there's some amazing individuals in the community that can help you. So not only do you receive text, but you're also going to be able to converse and exchange stories and share your prompts with other like-minded individuals who want to heal. So (laughs) I don't know what you're waiting for because I'm texting everybody right now. Make sure you hit the stress text community or less stress text community by typing stress in your phone to the number 860-401-0207 and i'll text y'all inside okay because he's like i'm not it's not clicking for me and then you see another black gentleman who's just like oh okay cool because certain people have certain levels of cognitive distortion when they join cults right some people kind of become and this is why they say brainwashed some people become very brainwashed to the point where it's just like yeah i don't really know what's happening but i'm going to position myself next to this person that i feel trust in and that's how it starts why do people join um, cults because there's usually that one person who reels them in and so in this case um there are several guys who 
was doing all the content making. If you're a content creator, you can 100% rela- um, relate to this, right? Content creator, business owner, anyone that's doing something in the creative space, you are wearing all the hats. You're recording. You're creating the content. You are editing. <laughs> you're marketing. All of that happens. You're marketing yourself so you can get more deals. All of that happens in this film. And the guys are just like, yeah. So when um, I believe Robert's son kind of steps in and helps because he's like the photographer, videographer, he steps in. They're like, oh, wow, weight off our shoulders. At this point now, mind you guys, when Robert's son, again, Robert is the pastor, his son steps in, they don't know anything about Shekinah. They just know like, all right, we got some help now. We could do our thing. We could just focus on dancing. Who wouldn't want that? It feels good, right? And so they're focusing on dancing. And then one day, Robert's son is like, hey, do you know the Lord? Hey, my God, my dad's his pastor. You should come. Long story short, they, they come. Again, they're trusting Robert's son. And I wish I remember this man's name. Um, they go to the church and this is how they become engulfed in 7M. Crazy stuff, all right? I don't like documentaries, but this one, baby, it was giving. It was giving. So y'all go watch it. So when we think about Miranda, um, when I told y'all earlier that they did that wellness check, what I failed to mention was when they did the wellness check, Robert's daughter was with Miranda. And Robert's daughter might have been, I don't know if Robert's daughter was her mentor, but my, Robert's daughter was 100% influential. And I'm going to assume this was the person that she she trusted. We do know that she had her husband. And I think I missed the part where she met her husband. I want to say she probably met her husband in the cult, right? And they got married. But there was someone she trusted, right? Because she remember now, she moved from her home, Detroit, I think, to L.A. And we know what happens when people move to L.A. or just in general by themselves. We seek connection, Anywhere you go, you're going to seek connection because we're not meant to be alone. Biblically speaking, if we were meant to be alone, Adam would not have no Eve. All right. <laughs> so we're not meant to be alone. So naturally, as people, we're going to want to seek some kind of connection. She met some people out there in L.A., and this is how she fell into Shekinah. The mystery here is, why did she stay? Why did she feel that stripping of her money her family, why did she feel it was okay? And that's the thing that people have are left un, um, unsettled with. I did not watch part three yet, so I don't know what happened in part three, but I have seen some things pop up on my timeline because you know, algorithm. And they speak about the money situation. And I took a picture of it because something wasn't right, right? So if you're part of this church and you're part of 7M, there are certain breakdowns that you have to adhere to, okay? Uh, So you have certain fees. So you have the photographer fee. That's one. You have rent because you're staying in their homes. And we know in cults, sometimes they have, they put people up in different houses, okay? In this situation, they were staying in the house, so you have rent. Then you have a management fee. Very standard, right? So if you're part of a management or if you have management, it's standard to have a management fee. Right. Then you have um, your ties fee, because again, Shekinah is a part of 7M. Then you have your offerings fee. Okay. So you got your ties, your offering. I thought that was one, but it's not. Right. And then you have your man of God fee. Okay. I'm going to post the picture up here so y'all can see it. Right. The photographer fee and the rent, they don't post those numbers here. The management fee is 20%, pretty standard, right? Tithes, 10%. In the Bible, okay, it talks about that. Offering fee, I'm a little confused because offering is something you give a free will. I'm not going to touch it. Man of God fee, never heard of this a day in my life. And I was today years old when I realized that the church does not get taxed. This girl on TikTok, if I can find her, her um, information, I will post it in the description box. The church does not get taxed. And it made me really scratch my head. And I said, devil, don't be putting no thoughts in my head now. But what? So here, check this out. The photography fee goes to the son, who's a part of the, uh, he's a part of the business. He's a part of Shekinah. He's a part of 7M. He works there, okay? Rent also goes to 7M because they live in the house. Management fee also goes to 7M because they live in the house. The 10% for ties and fee goes to Shekinah because they're part of the church who's a part of 7M. Offering goes to Shekinah because it's part of the church because they go to 7M or a part of 7M. Men of God fee. 
20%, which goes to Shekinah because it's a part of 7M. The example they gave here is the $100,000. Now, when you subtract all those things, baby, that's $70,000. You then left with $30,000. This woman here on the screen mentions taxes. Because you're in a certain bracket, that's 30%. When you take that away, you're left with nothing. So Miranda, why were you staying there? How, if I if I could have Miranda sit in my office and I just do a clinical assessment, it'd be so amazing. And I'm looking at her as a, she's a person, but I just enjoy trying to understand the mind and what happens with people, which is why I think I draw connections myself because I'm like, hey, I want to understand why your mind works this way. So this is happening. We cannot ignore the fact that trauma bonding is real. They're all trauma bonding because when you're listening to the documentary, you're realizing that there are people who are there who did not have any cars, who did not have homes. They were performing. They were starving artists. And so being a starving artist, you know that you want to find some kind of security, which leads me always back to the money aspect. Man, here's Robert. Robert promising, he's promising these people riches upon riches upon riches. And how can you, as a starving artist, say, man, no, I'm not going to do that. So right there, you become vulnerable. And in that point, as I'm listening to some of the sermons that they're playing in the documentary, I'm like, this man is a narcissist. This man is a narcissist. Let me tell you when I knew he was a narcissist. This man said, you cannot go to heaven through Jesus. Yeah, I forgot through me. I'm a set. Mm -mm. no <laughs> right what do you mean the bible does not say robert died <laughs> and rose again <laughs> it's me really laughing at this because i found this so comical bible don't say that it don't it don't the bible speaks of jesus so when he goes on to tell these people that they have to find god and obey him I lost it. I lost it because I, I, I couldn't understand. I couldn't. And to this day, I still don't. Mind y'all, I still have part three to watch, but just part one and two, it got me. And so the trauma that is continuously had in this, we have to look at the parents of Miranda and the parents of all these people who've been cut off we have to look at them and their trauma too because trauma is vicarious. So Miranda is experiencing, and the people there are experiencing something called religious trauma. Religious trauma is one that causes psychological or emotional distress due to horrible religious practices. Um, I remember having my first religious um, trauma patient and it was a little hard for me. It was a little hard um, for the fact that I... I'm really, so I'm Christian, obviously, if y'all can't tell, I be trying, I be trying. And so when she came into my practice, I did not even realize how real religious trauma is. And this is what was happening with these people, right? There were, they were, they were becoming emotionally broken. They were becoming <clears throat> distressed cognitively they couldn't think for themselves and this is what trauma does y'all and y'all know trauma trauma is my gem so I keep talking about it trauma lives in the body but it also lives right up here and I talk about the body more because we don't we don't think about it but it does live up here and we know that someone's traumatized when they can't make judgments for themselves Miranda had to speak to a mentor to say if she can go to her grandfather's funeral and opposed, supposedly this mentor is higher to God. We know that when you're seeking God or religion, you're supposed to be seeking it. You seek, you, you have your own salvation. <laughs> Miranda wasn't getting her own salvation through this. So I don't know, Lord, what was happening. But these are just some of the things that were occurring. Now, how do you avoid this? Security. You avoid it by being secure. And I, I keep saying it's easier said than done. But... A part of being secure is understanding how we attach to people, which I talk about um, in a lot of my episodes. And I know you'll like the one at the end of the video. So make sure you keep watching so that you can click on it after. Right. Um, we secure ourselves with having good supports. We secure ourselves with understanding how we show up and who we are in the world. And because Miranda was in this space where she is trying to seek fame and y'all don't come for me in the comments because there's no way you're not trying to seek fame if you're going to LA to be better yes she wants to seek fame 
And two things can occur at the same time. She wants to seek fame, yes, but she's also seeking her passion, and that's okay too, right? But she had to know who she, I I really believe she didn't know who she was in herself because she continuously allowed Robert to do what he did. The horrible part here is, guys, um, I they allude to the fact that in part three there are people that have become that are essayed, assaulted. Okay, because you know sometimes uh, the tube and certain platforms will block out words, so y'all just follow along with me. There are people who were essayed in Robert under Robert's hands. Um, obviously they were stripped of their money and these are things that are not okay, but they were made to believe the people that this was happening to was made to believe it was okay, which is just so heartbreaking. So heartbreaking. This is not the first time we hear about cults. Um, a long time ago, there was Jim Jones (laughs) and I'm not talking about the rapper, y'all. I'm talking about the guy in Guyana. Um, I actually did a play. (laughs) Shout out to you, Yolanda, because I know you watching. I did a play. She put on a play. Um, and we did Jim Jones. And it was another thing where people was drinking this Kool-Aid. And Guyana thinking that if they drank the Kool-Aid, they would go to heaven. Well, y'all, y'all go watch a documentary, okay? <laughs> because when they drank that, that Kool-Aid, they died. Which, in a sense, now that I'm saying this out loud, I guess I get it. But I don't think people were under... They weren't taking it as such. And you could see the man down, he had the big old shields, right? And he's just like, yes, drink. And you hear people in the background screaming, and I'm like, yo. And so we reenacted this, right? But these things happen because of a lack of security in themselves and the understanding, well, because this is a religious trauma, the understanding of what's happening in their lives. And to that, I'm just, I'm just keep praying for people. But of course that happened years, 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 eons ago. Now we're, we're seeing this, which I guess has been going on for like the past 20 years too. Uh, but just 7M was like Robert's big break. Okay, y'all, because Robert truly wanted to be famous himself. You can hear him in these sermons, which I don't know how these are called sermons, um, saying like, hey, you know, apparently people are talking about us and he wants to do a documentary. He's so hype, y'all. He's so hype. He is like, yeah. And the crowd is like, yeah, we're famous now. His goal has always been to be famous. It's just 7M was his successful attempt. I guess he tried it with other people. Now, there are people who have escaped. Like I said, how did they do it? I don't know. Because what I've watched up until this point has not highlighted that. But these are, these people are all trauma bonded for life now. They are. And for people who are leading cults, uh, find Jesus. I, I don't know what else to say. Y'all just go find God. Because how? How are you leading people to nowhere? And you knowingly leading people to nowhere. Or on a psycho- psychological level, you are believing your lies because you're truly a narcissist. All right. And you, your desire for control is so big that you're preying on the vulnerable. Narcissists don't usually prey on secure people. Um, and you, y'all can argue with me, but this is just kind of true. And I said, don't usually, all right. Because the vulnerability is what they seek. They will love bomb you. And in this case, Robert kind of love bombed them with like the fascination and the promises of money. And again, who doesn't love money? Money gets you places. And I I could say like, hey, people are like, hey, I don't love money, but y'all do, okay? (laughs) And I'm gonna tell you why. I'm not saying you love money to the point where you'll do anything for it, but we love money because it affords us time with our family. It affords us roofs over our head, food to eat, right? It's the resource that gets us the sustenance. So I get it. So that's why people are still like, hey, yeah, I'm gonna join your 7M group because you're, this facade of a church um, makes it seem okay until you get too deep into it and you're like, man, I'm here now. And so you kind of give up. And I think that Miranda's family was kind of alluding to that when they saw her. It's just like, hey, she looks really different. She looks, she's not our daughter still. Yeah, it's such a great documentary. So go watch it, go watch it. Um, I just had to highlight to y'all what was happening on a psychological level and how the vulnerabilities and insecurities 
how it happens to people because we don't talk about it a lot. Um, chemically too, there are things happening in our brains when someone gives us that trust and it happens again, which it just takes one person for you, for you to trust that will then lead you into a stray. Let me give you a, a real example too. If you're in a relationship and your significant other's like, Hey, try this right? Some kind of drug, whatever. You're like, Hey, I might try it because I trust this person versus if it's just a stranger on the street, you're not going to try it. They, when you're joining cults, people have to build your trust first in order for you to get there, which leads me to my story. So y'all I went to college. I don't think I've ever told anybody this. I have never told anybody this story because I never like got into the cult. I don't think, (laughs) I hope not. Wait, Anyway, so I'm in college, right? I'm like maybe 21 and I'm going to be careful what I say because some people that I went to college with were 100% in this cult and I've never to this day spoken to this girl that introduced me into it, Um, but I'm assuming she's out because she's out here in the world. She's doing her thing. She's doing music. She's amazing, right? And so me and her were good friends and she started to do Bible studies with me and I was like, all right, this is cool. Right. Um, and ho- disclaimer, y'all going to see somebody else I went to school with. This is not that girl. Okay. This is not that girl. So, um, we started to do Bible studies cause she's like, Oh, do you know the Lord? And I'm like, yeah, you know, I know him a little some, some, so we started to do Bible studies. Um, we would go like different places on the campus. Sometimes she would drive me out to other places cause she was an upperclassman and, um, we would just do dinners and we would just start, do Bible study. And I was like, Oh, this is kind of dope. Right. And so, from there, she would, she, maybe like a month or two passed by and then she would say like, Hey, um, this Thursday, would you want to go to such and such as house? Cause he has a house on campus. And this was an older gentleman. Um, she called him, I think at the time she called him like some kind of pastor. Um, would you want to go to such and such a house? Because we're doing a group Bible study. And I'm like, okay, cool. We go to the house. Um, everything's kind of blur. It's blurry, y'all, because a trauma. I've been through my own trauma. I am actually going through my own trauma therapy because a lot of trauma has happened to me. Yes, I'm transparent, so I'm sharing that. Right. Um, so it was kind of a blur, but I remember being there. Um, the vibe was off. I'm gonna tell you one thing, baby. God has always given me discernment. Okay. The vibe was off. When I was at the house, I seen this one girl that I actually had class with. Um, I didn't really talk to her. Um, but I mean, she was cool. She was there, but she was always kind of, ah, just different than others. And I didn't know if it was like, Hey, it's a Christian thing or if it's just, you want a cold baby and you feel stuck kind of thing. And so while we're at this house, we're having Bible study. I remember, um, the pastor kind of praying very rarely. Um, and I remember him speaking to me and he was just like, so do you want to be a part of our group? And I'm like, what do you mean? It's like, oh, do you want to be a part of your, our group? And I'm like, um, I don't know what you mean. He was like, well, you know, we do things together all the time. On Mondays, we do this. Tuesdays, we do that, 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 that. And y'all, I grew up in the church. So I understand that as being in a church, there's going to be different things you do every day that is religious based. I understand that completely. But this just didn't feel like that. Um, and then when I was like, hey, let me think about it. He didn't pressure me. Um, so I was like, okay, I'll think about it. Then, weirdly enough, (laughs) days went on um, and I would go to like the dining hall and there would be the girl that I said I had class with, not the girl that got me in, but the girl that I said I had class with. And she would start talking to me and she'd be like, oh, are you going to join us today? And I'm like, oh, I don't know. And it it just felt very weird. It felt very off, right? Um, because she would tell me, like, the girl, again, I had class with, oh, you can't do that if you're going to be with us. You have to do this this way. And I'm thinking, like, ain't nowhere in the Bible it say what you're saying. But, again, I was on the fence, right? Um, I did want to seek the Lord. I did want to have a good relationship with God. But I just didn't feel like that was the way to do it. So then my homegirl, like the one that got me in, like on her last attempt, she was like, hey, we're going to such and such somewhere off campus. And it just didn't feel right. And from then on, I I backed off. It was a cult. (laughs) It was a cult. And after I finished this, I'm actually going to hit her up and ask her how she got out. Um, Because, yeah, it was giving. We didn't have signed no NDAs. At least I didn't get to that far. Um, but they literally, it was a group of like 
15 people. It wasn't no bigger than that. And as a, they never advertise like, hey, church is this day. It's just like, hey, this is only for this set of people. And you can only go to this event when we say you can go, right? That has to do with that. So I say that to say, y'all just be careful out here. Um, again, things don't always seem how they seem in the beginning until you're in it. And when you're in it, it kind of feels like inescapable. So I get it. Right. But if you enjoy what I'm saying and you're still like, "Mm, well, how do I know if I have insecure attachment? Make sure you hit the video right here. It's going to pop up. It's really, really helpful. Um, Real quick for the culture moment. Yeah. Obi Aman. Okay. The Obi Aman in Jamaica is a man that does like magic. And magic is um, you can drink something. And they make you do something odd, right? They might say like, oh, don't eat that food because the obi man puts, yeah, 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 obi, yeah, stuff like that, right? In this cult situation, Jamaicans would say like, that's the obi man. Robert was the obi man, okay? So that's the real quick for the culture moment. Y'all, hit me in the comments. What did y'all think? Did y'all see this? Did you not watch it? Um, y'all listening, let me know. What do you think about this documentary? Are you going to watch it? Did you feel like Miranda, something happened to Miranda? I just want to join in the conversation with y'all. And if you still feel like that's not enough, hit this video here too, okay? Because you're going to like it. It's going to help you. It's going to help you unpack trauma to heal your relationships, y'all, because that's what we're here for. All right, y'all, walk good and keep the vibes high. And I will see y'all in the next one.